Welcome to The Beat, your go-to where leaders, founders, and investors share insights on growth, innovation, and business building. I'm Chitra Nabat, your host. Joining us today is Dr. Evie Cunningham, Providence Chief of Virtual Care and Digital Health. Evie, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Providence, one of the top health systems in the country, owns and operates over 50 hospitals and 1,000 clinics with revenue over $25 billion. Share with us the scale and complexities of Providence. Yeah, I mean, Providence is a beast, right? We're one of the largest nonprofit health systems in the country. We span seven states, eight states if you include our virtual and digital footprint. And uh, we have a lot of muscle, clinical muscle. We have brick and mortar. We have uh, clinics. We have imaging centers. So we have all of those things in place, but we also have a very robust and virtual and digital infrastructure. And I'm really excited to, to share with you all the things that we're doing. So on top of that, we've built this in enormous ecosystem of virtual and digital capabilities that we're going to continue to innovate upon going into the future. We'll get into virtual, but take us into What's distinct and challenging about the patient population you serve and the clinical areas you focus on? Well, Providence was founded by four nuns 165 years ago, and we are very true to our mission. And our mission is to serve the poor and vulnerable populations. And we do more than our fair share of what that needs to be for a nonprofit health system. We are extremely committed and mission focused, but that also creates challenges for us in that we're taking care of underserved patient populations and we have to be able to stay afloat from a financial and economic perspective in order to be able to do that. And so you don't survive as a healthcare organization for over 165 years without innovating and transforming. And if you look at our entire history and the culture of the organization, you can see that we have innovated and transformed throughout all of those years to continue to be able to do what we do today, which is serving our patient population. So on the innovation and transformation, especially, especially against the backdrop of the populations you serve, the staying afloat, and the macroeconomics in the healthcare industry, which is provider health systems having de negative to depressed uh, margins. Right. What are the top three drivers of growth? Yeah, so within my uh, organization, and we'll talk a little bit about the portfolio of services that uh, we have, services and products that we have within virtual care and digital health, we have three strategic priorities that we focus in on. And we see these strategic priorities addressing some of the most existential components of uh, challenges within the healthcare system of things that we need to address. Those are workforce shortage and burnout, hospital throughput and capacity, and care fragmentation. So everything that we're innovating upon, everything we're transforming upon, everything we prioritize from a solution delivery perspective, we're tying it back to those three challenges and saying, how is this new product, this new service, this new innovation addressing those three existential challenges that we have as a health system? Quick examples of each category of what you're doing. Yeah, so we have within virtual care and digital health, we have the very large and broad portfolio of almost end-to-end -end virtual and digital care solutions, starting all the way from digital, asynchronous, automated care delivery products like MedPearl, which we'll talk about a little bit later, to remote patient monitoring programs. Uh, we have great partnerships with uh, health, uh, companies that are doing remote, remote patient monitoring, remote therapeutic monitoring, or remote... PT, care in the home delivery, hospital at home, uh, virtual visits that we can, we do over a million virtual visits a year uh, in our health system for ambulatory care, all the way up to um, post-acute use cases as well, like how do we enroll a patient post-discharge uh, in, a, in a CHF or a, a congestive heart failure remote patient monitoring program so we keep that patient out of the hospital. So we have a very large portfolio of services, and then we have a very large uh, inpatient telemedicine program where we're delivering at scale inpatient telemedicine services across seven states, and we're stretching the capacity of our uh, physicians like neurologists, infectious disease doctors, hospitalists, where we can have them meet patients where they are in 90 plus hospitals across our state footprint and so we can uh, 
really optimize care delivery by delivering those types of services at scale. From the patient's perspective, help me understand, when do I come to you for virtual care versus a Teladoc Health versus another startup virtual health provider? Yeah, I mean, I think that kind of goes back to like the care fragmentation comment that I made. Um, there is a lot of fragmentation that is taking place in the industry right now, so it is very confusing for patients. But if you look at Providence, we are an end-to-end -end care continuum, right? We start from, uh, you know, primary care or at birth, right? You know, <laughs> delivery, you, you know, you can deliver your baby in our facilities and uh, you can end up in one of our hospice care facilities at end, end of life but, or, or hospice care programs at end of life and everything in between. So we're a full continuum uh, care delivery system. But we also uh, realize that we have to have an ecosystem of virtual and digital care solutions. And sometimes we can't build everything ourselves. We do a build versus buy evaluation for all the things that we try to bring in. And uh, we partner. We partner with companies uh, to, to deliver care in some of these unique ways if we can't do it ourselves. And so that's kind of where those uh, different companies might come in to, to our ecosystem. So I would say that how does it feel for a patient is probably very confusing right now for a patient, but our vision is that we can stitch all of those things together. So it's an end-to-end -end experience for the patients. So on this notion of end-to-end -end experience, that gets into the concept of omni-channel healthcare, which right. is something that the industry is talking about and shifting to. And omni-channel healthcare is similar to, in the retail industry, yeah. omni-channel shopping, right? Uh, you know, more than 20 years ago in the retail industry, they shifted from only in-store shopping to now seamless omni-channel, e-commerce, mobile device, multi-modal. Healthcare is struggling with this. What are the sticky barriers to getting to omni-channel healthcare? Yeah. And how do we solve that? Yeah, so, I mean, I think we're creatures of habit as physicians, right? So I think some of the barriers have been us, right? Um, and I think there was a lot of, uh, interest in investment and transformation in healthcare over the last decade, but it didn't involve the clinicians who are actually doing the work. So all these tech companies were trying to come in and they're like, we're gonna disrupt healthcare and they couldn't disrupt us because we need to be part of the solution building. So the people doing the work partnering with the tech companies to co-create and innovate together is really where the magic is going to happen. So I think that that's starting to happen. It is happening. The tide is changing. You see so many more clinicians like involved and engaged at this conference than even two years ago. So that's one of the sticky barriers that needed to get, we needed to get past. So you're seeing that co-creation, that collaboration between technology experts and clinicians really starting to innovate together and trying to do the best things for the patients right in the end. The other thing that we need to overcome too is the regulatory uh, hurdles. There is a lot of uncertainty from a regulatory perspective around virtual care and digital care. And so we really need to get um, permanency and reimbursement and reassurance that you know hospital at home is gonna be reimbursed past 2024. Uh, virtual visits are gonna be reimbursed. So those are some things that need to be overcome as well. And then the last thing I would say is privacy, security, you know, when you're going and shopping for clothes, that's a very different uh, security, privacy issue, uh, data that's being shared. It, it's, it's not as big of a deal compared to patient data, right? And so I think some of the barriers and some of the challenges around being able to transform in that space has been like, how do we do this in a thoughtful way where we're not imposing upon people's privacy, um, that we're making sure that we're putting in all the things that are secure around the solutions so that we can feel comfortable that we're not gonna have like a cybersecurity breach. And, and that's, a, that's top of mind for everybody today. So where is Providence on this omnichair uh, omni-channel healthcare continuum. Right. And what's the next phase of maturation? Yeah, so I mean, I feel like we're really on a good trajectory. We have one of the largest telemedicine portfolios in the country. We have a strong commitment from the very top all the way down, bottoms up as well, to innovate and transform. We have a large global center 
in India where we have engineers and AI experts helping us innovate and transform. So I think we're in a really great place and very well situated. That being said, you know, it's messy. We're still trying to work through, we're repiping the way that we deliver care um, with digital infrastructure and that takes time. And every health system is sort of um, grappling with this today, but um, it's, ha it's happening. I feel like there's a strong commitment, not only from our health system, but other health systems that we talk to and we collaborate with, they all wanna get on this journey and they all see where we need to go. Where will you see the impact uh, flow through when you talk about the piping? on the cost line and on the revenue line. Because yeah. it you know, translates to the numbers, right? Yeah, no. And, and, health, and health outcomes. Yeah, and I mean, I think, I think that's, that's, that's sometimes one of the challenging things, especially when you're talking to like different startups or different companies that are out there that really like have a great idea, but they don't understand the economics, like the ROI and the KPIs uh, that we need to like be very steadfast with as a health system, because as much as we love to innovate, we also have to like, tie the purse strings and make sure that we stay afloat. So I would say as I went back to those three priorities, you know, workforce shortage and burnout, hospital throughput and capacity and care fragmentation. Those are all things that as we address those challenges, we're only gonna benefit our, our work, our, our caregivers, our clinicians and our patients, but we also tie those to ROI and uh, KPIs and outcomes. And so we sort of look at that holistically as we're innovating within the system. Leadership. In life and business, there are rules, codes, norms to how things are done. Where have you been a code breaker and how did you do it? Yeah, so <laughs> I would say that um, I've always had sort of a reputation of being a clinician disruptor. <laughs> or I, say, I tell people I'm a a change management ninja, right? Um, so, I mean, if you look at my entire career, you see that I have constantly challenged my peers, my, my colleagues to think different, do different, try different, and transform care delivery. You know, if you look at early in my career, I was um, pushing, hey, we need to do collaborative care with midwives. We need to do outpatient birth. Not every birth needs to be done in the hospital. We need to do group, group prenatal care. So that was sort of, let's do robotics. And then now, if you look at what I'm doing within Providence, it's more on the technology side. So one of the things that we did was we developed from idea to scale a clinical, a digital assistant and content management system called MedPearl. It's basically a clinical intelligence engine that provides actionable intelligence to the clinicians at the point of care. And uh, it started as an idea because there's so much, um, so much, so many challenges with knowledge and information and data overload for our clinicians that it's cognitively just too challenging for us to manage it all. So what if we take all of that and put it into a platform that can be governed, maintained, and managed by clinicians for clinicians? Went from idea, like a drawing on a Figma board two years ago to full scale today. We have over 7,000 clinicians using it. We've done over 200,000 searches in it as of last year, and um, it is, contextualizing patient data with knowledge all on the same screen. And the clinicians just absolutely love it because it was built around human-centered design approach to care. And, um, and it's really easing the way for the clinicians. It's making it easier for them to take care of the patients and it's reducing that burnout and bringing joy back into the practice of medicine. Evie, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.